<clears throat> hello, hello everyone. Happy birthday to the Ghostbusters. The video game, that is. Specifically the Famicom release, the original 1986 September 22nd release of Ghostbusters on the family computer. That is what we're celebrating today by taking a look at various different versions of that game. Uh, it should be noted, it wasn't the first version of this game to release. That would have been the Commodore 64 version, programmed by uh, no less than David Pitfall Crane. On behalf of Activision, that's actually the version we're going to start with. That should be the, the baseline, right, in this instance? Uh, because, you know, it's the original. It's what all the other versions are derivatives of, including that NES Famicom version. And then maybe, time permitting, we'll get to the uh, Master System version that everyone sort of agrees is the better version. It was brought before chat, uh, before the stream went live in chat by Kefki12. Maybe we'll also play the Atari 2600 version. But uh, we're going to start with the Commodore 64 version. Also, this is a very short notice stream. I only had the idea to do this like 10, 20 minutes ago. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Let's get this 2600 version booted. I say that this is the original version, but it launched concurrently on a few different computers, on a few different models. I just think the C64 version is a as good a starting point as any. You know, there's also a uh, Atari 800 version. I think there's an MSX version, ZX Spectrum version. We are playing this in C64, though. Signed by David Crane, copyright 1984. Gotta let this intro play out a little bit. Should I stretch this to 4x3? Should I stretch this vertically? If there is something strange in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? The ghost guys. If there is something weird and it doesn't look good, who are you going to call? The Ghostbusters! I like my karaoke uh, version of that. I don't know, I bring that out to the bars and uh, people boo me off the stage. Uh, so... I guess there's jealous, might be the situation. I ain't afraid of no ghost! And then I can't wait for the, uh, oh, if you're seeing things running through your head, who can you call? Psychiatrist! An invisible man. All right, it's enough of that. Let's start the... <laughs> how, how insufferable is that bit on a scale of one to please stop? Uh, yeah, this, in, this C64 version starts with a uh, bit of a, a call, a bit of a, a hiring card here. We're, we're opening the business, as it were. Uh, you are not getting my government name. Do you have an account? <laughs> no, this is actually, I'm, I'm just opening an account right now. In that case, welcome to your new business. As a new franchise owner, the bank will advance you $10,000 for equipment. Don't spend it all in one place. So, on this screen here, we can go through some of the vehicles. Uh, we we're getting the hearse. I mean, that's what you do. But, we might as well look at the other cars. Five items of cargo, 75 miles per hour, the budget option. Nine items, we can't possibly need too much more than that. Station wagon, 11 items. Don't need that many items. In the high performance. Can't even afford this one. And that's alright. Let's go with the hearse. Uh, Video Game King saying, Franchise, is there a fucking corporate structure to the Ghostbusters? I thought the idea was that they were scrappy underdogs financing this shit on their own and working the job on their own time. Uh, I'll admit, I didn't have time to in the 10 minutes before I had this idea to watch the entire movie. So I could speak authoritatively to it, but, uh... Yeah, that, that's more or less what I remember from it. Do we need the marshmallow sensor? So we can tell when... I think you'd be able to see the Stave Puff marshmallow guy from some distance away. I mean, he, he scales pretty large. Uh, ghost bait I know is for the, the staircase sequence. Traps we, we need... 
actually can't proceed off the screen without them. Ghost vacuum, that's for sucking people up, or sucking up ghosts as we drive during the road segments, which are definitely a portion of this game. A, a non-insignificant one. And I don't remember what the portable laser confinement is. And that might be like the super trap. If memory serve. In any case... I'm keeping the audio intentionally low, because y'all are gonna get sick of hearing the Ghostbusters theme after a while. And that is a problem with every version of the game. Now, I'm gonna drop a controversial take on all y'all. I think this is the worst version of the game. I mean, not the worst, like the 2600 version being a version of this, like a weaker version of this, is, is pretty rough. But the NES version, not that bad. All things told. Granted, I'm not good at this. But, uh, there, there's just a, a, a few things, a few key factors, namely the fact that you spend so much time on this road, and in this version of the game it's pretty miserable. There ain't much to it, you're just kind of waiting. Maybe you catch a couple ghosts, but there's no obstacles. There's no real incentive to play well there. Alright, bring this guy in. I'm controlling both of these Ghostbusters. The goal is obviously to catch slime the Slimer. But the NES version makes that portion a lot easier because your uh, your proton beams, or whatever the fuck they're called, actually sticky the ghost. The ghost gets stuck to them, so you can just drag them on top of the trap. Very convenient. In this one, the ghosts uh, will kind of do their damnedest to avoid you. And yes, people are noticing there is real voice audio, real audio samples in this version of the game. Which, you know, presentationally, a positive. I don't think we're going to play through the entirety of this version, of this original version here. Because I find it boring. Truth be told, most of the versions of this game are pretty, pretty boring. Which is maybe why we've only uh, brought in so many viewers right now, but could also be that I gave no warning. Oh, I totally missed a ghost there. Don't worry, we get a second shot. You don't get money for it in this version, you just sort of stop them. It slows the, the growth of the PK meter. A little bit, a little bit, come on. There we go. 400 bucks the easy way. And you've seen uh, most of what there is to see in this version of the game. It is a much slower version of this game than on the NES. Uh, Mr. Taco asks, can you confirm or deny that busting gives you a positive emotional response? I'm gonna deny that, because I'm not feeling particularly good about any of this. Uh, so... <laughs> so, goals in this version of the game. We started with $10,000. We need to make back at least $10,000 worth of money. Uh, we need to make back more than we spend come uh, Stay Puff time. And the more I, I drive around here, the more dots I leave on the screen, the longer these drives are, so you don't want to just kill time Twiddle your thumbs, go back and forth on that city map screen. Because it will actually result in these sections being that much more torturous. Alright, let's see if we can get them. I'm going to face both my guys away, because they're, the placement of their beams doesn't really matter. All that matters is if we catch them with that, which I did not. There might be a science to making that work slightly better, but I have never been invested in this version of the game enough to, to learn. All I know is that if you cross the streams, you instantly knock yourself out the game. So to have them facing in the same direction, like so, is basically a recipe for disaster. I, I mistimed it again. I think we've lost both of our Ghostbusters at this point, so we have to go back to the Ghostbusters HQ. 
Uh, Video Game King says, Conceptually and historically speaking, I find this underlying design intriguing, if loose. There's a sort of broad game philosophy to the game flow, as if to say, this is what Atari design sensibilities would look like if they're given more time to grow and develop. Sure. I would go as far as to say that it, it's too loose. That there's, there's basically nothing to it past a certain point. You're basically just killing time until such a time as you can enter the Stay Puff building. And, you know, if you if you want to catch ghosts, I, I suppose that you you're doing that. This this segment might be exciting to someone. It occurs to me that I need to drive past all the buildings to see which ones may or may not have ghosts in them. Or do they flash on their own? Yeah, no, no, I think I need to be in proximity to them. Again, not catching the ghosts while you're... Or not getting paid for capturing the ghosts while you're on this screen. Also, no gas to worry about. No running out of gas in the car. So really, I, I can just, like, do nothing here. I can just stay in the center, and maybe a ghost will appear, and I can go left or right a little bit. Got him. Ain't this grand? Ain't this exciting? Man, it would sure be a shame if they ruin this by, by adding more, like, gameplay to it, right? The NES version, abomination for, for destroying what is clearly a perfect vision for... Fuck this! I don't remember what the purple buildings mean. Uh, your backup men are all out of action. Well, I guess we're going to Ghostbusters HQ, then. I don't know why that voice of mine, why I put some sort of stink on that. Video Game King says, Please, by the way, send messages. Send as many messages as possible. Ask whatever questions you can. Save us from this stream. Uh, Video Game King says, The main problem is that there's no connection between your activities outside and inside the Zool building. Ghostbusters could have framed the former as you gathering the resources you need to take on the latter, but doesn't... No, that is that is not the main problem. The main problem is that the, the ghost-catching part of this game, in, in the Ghostbusters video game, uh, sucks. In that these road segments are, f are nothing. Yeah, I can inch it a little closer... Oh, come on! <laughs> they should have just given me that one. What does the purple building mean? Notice how we haven't made much money in this version. In this playthrough. Alright, nothing happening here. And now the building is red. So now we can... Get to work. I... I... So, I should explain, you can't alternate your control between these two characters on this screen. My backup men are all out of action. So even though there's stuff I could be doing there, because I, I let two guys get hit because I whiffed twice, I'm going back to base. Ooh, we have a few ghosts to catch this time. Which I think speaks to the fact that, you know, the longer the game goes on, the quicker the ghosts start to appear to flood towards the Zool building. This should be a short drive at least. If I don't capture a ghost on this screen, I am fast-forwarding and letting this city get destroyed. So, when I press right on the analog stick, it moves the guy on the left, closer towards the goal. When I press left, it moves the guy on the right, closer to the left, to the goal, to the trap. Fuck this. I can't alternate between that. That's another thing the NES game does. Like, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that the NES version of this game does a bunch of smart things with the design. It improves on this foundation, on this incredibly boring, incredibly rote, frustrating foundation. Why are there no ghosts here? The building was blinking red. Now I've lost control. Now we see the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and he's, he's doing his business. We've, we've lost a building, and he did $4,000 worth of damage. Uh, $4,000 worth of damage, even. And uh, that's going to hurt us, because now we have zero dollars. So now we need to work that much harder if we wanted to get above, like, the $10,000 line. But I don't really feel like doing that. 
so let's just fast forward. The key master and gatekeeper arrived at Zool, ending the game. They're still calling the building Zool in this. He didn't make enough money, so the bank has foreclosed. Better luck next time! Starting bound. Yeah, so that's the C64 version, and... Yeah, we only have down to go from there, huh? Like... <sighs> that's just a bad game. You know? <laughs> like, it's, it's innovative. The, the management aspect, grafted on top of action gameplay, is sort of, like, inspired, I guess. But fuck me. That is miserable. So here we are on the NES. I believe this version was developed by Bits Laboratory. Published in Japan by uh, Tokuma Shoten. Then published in North America by Activision. All right, we have the baseline. We have the audio sample. And yet, yeah, similar. Uh, presentation definitely stepped down here. We're gonna go to this shop first. The game doesn't start with the shop. Should I lower the volume a little bit? Yeah, just four decibels. All right. So here we are on the road, and now there are there are cars to avoid and gas to consider. I'm gonna give you all a secret. Uh, go up here. It goes a little faster. At every 100 meter interval, or is it miles? Who's to say? That's when the gas cans appear. That's when you want to run into the gas cans and refill your gas. And if you keep an eye on that, you can speed up most of the time, slow down when you know you're approaching that milestone, and never ever run out of gas. Here we are on the shop screen. We could not purchase a uh, our choice of car. We just get four slots on the hearse. Uh, capture traps. I would like to invest in the super trap. That is a trap that we don't need to constantly go back to Ghostbusters HQ to refill. But I also want the ghost vacuum, and we also need a beam. So what is that? 5,500. Yeah. Do we need a capture beam? I think we need a capture beam. I think we need to buy this for now. And then we need to buy basic trap for now. So with one trap, every time we capture the ghosts on the screen where you capture the ghosts, we need to hoof it back to Ghostbusters HQ. We'll save up, we'll get the super trap. And then uh, that will be a thing of the past at some point. And you know what? Fuck it. Give me the ghost alarm so I don't have to guess at what buildings have ghosts in them. And everything else here is very expensive, but uh, believe you me, we'll be earning money in this game at a, a much faster rate. Oh boy, yeah, there's a lot of ghosts around here. Let's just speed through because there's only 100 meters here, so... Alright. See these ghosts? I can sticky them like this. Or like that. Is that ghost gonna come? Ah, I missed him, but that's alright. I can live with that. We still got three ghosts. Pretty decent amount, if you ask me. But we do need to empty our trap. So we can't attend to these buildings immediately. Uh, let me look at chat. Ghost alarm is so funny. The PKE meter. Why do they call it the ghost alarm? Oh, I missed the barrel there. Despite my advice from earlier. So let's speed up. Slow down. And light clockwork. I think the ghosts appearing on the screen is completely arbitrary, completely random. I don't think it's tied to any number. It's a PK meter, why they call it the ghost alarm? Uh, because the PK meter is, is what's measuring the amount of ghost activity in general. PK energy at the bottom of the screen. So they're, they're compartmentalizing it as two separate things. I could use some gas. Nah, well. I could cheat. I could just rewind. But I'll give you a, a genuine playthrough of this. I'll give you a legitimate playthrough. Because I don't mind this game. Oh, I was so close again, that one. Wait, he's coming back down. And there we go. This is so much easier than on the, the C64 version. Ain't that crazy? It's almost like this was designed by people who 
could see the fault, could see the issues present in the original version, and work to amend them or something. Uh, let's see here. Nuclear Potato SA says, I don't think I could ever figure out how the menus were supposed to work. Uh, try the Atari 2600 version sometime, where you need to literally flip the difficulty switches on the console to, to thumb, to navigate through the menus in the shops. That is truly hellish. Uh, Sarah the Croxune saying, I've, uh, when are you gonna, when are you gonna start calling this game a shitload of fuck? I've only seen this on the AVGN. Sorry, it ain't that stream. Uh, <laughs> See, we're about giving these games a chance of some sort. I, I deployed too early there. I accidentally pressed that button. I'm gonna cheat a little bit because that was an unintentional input. Also, we can toggle between the different Ghostbusters, move them back and forth. Again, just little things that make this game so much more pleasant to play. I want to get four at once, because that's where the big money's at. Ah, uh, we still need an empty trap. Can I go to the shop and dump out the trap? I'm gonna- I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna go to Ghostbusters HQ first, dump out the trap, and then I'm gonna buy the super trap. Because we- oh, well, I missed a ghost and a barrel there. Because I was going too fast. You will miss the ghosts if you drive too fast. They are speedy little buggers. Got that barrel though, so we're still fine as far as gas is concerned. If you want to pre, if you want to get ahead, if you feel like you're running low on gas, there is a gas station you can go to. It's the top left corner of the screen. All right, to the shop we go, and maybe we'll catch a ghost or two on the way over here. We lose money when we crash into those, uh, those other cars. Oh, come on! I should sort of stay towards the center here. And sort of, like, speed up, slow down. Yeah, I like that. So that way if a ghost appears, I can be, like, in primo position. I can dodge, I can go for the gas cans. Not quite as fast as just gunning it and hoping for the best, but... Anyway, we can go to this menu here, we can sell our Ghost Trap, we can buy our Super Trap, and now we no longer need to stop off at Ghostbusters HQ. So that's gonna save us a lot of time and money, potentially. Song's fading out. I sure hope another song starts up. Shit. <laughs> I think we're about to run out of gas. Are we gonna get out and push the car? No, we we just made it to here in time, which means we're gonna run out of gas immediately when we get back in the car. But at the very least, we'll be able to afford it with all the ghosts we're capturing here. Hey, we got four for one. And thank God the music. We we started up again with uh, with some new music, with some fresh tunes. Uh, let's go to this building immediately run out of gas, unless I can capture a gas can. Nope, nope. Luckily, there'll be a gas station very close by. It'll make you watch this screen for too long. Uh, Magic Meows quips that we're selling ghosts for profits. And uh, Mr. Taco says, where do you think Spirit Halloween gets their stock? Very true, it's a very good point. They gotta come from somewhere. There we go, we're not gonna run out of gas again! Alright, let's capture some more ghosts, why don't we? We can get longer beams. They don't reach, like, the tippy top of the screen or anything, but... And eventually all these ghosts will disappear if we take too long on the screen, but usually you have enough time to make a quick 3,000 in one fell swoop there. So I ain't sweating it. Ooh, we got three at once. Rapid Fiasco asking if anyone watched the Spirit Halloween movie. Ahem, excuse me! A Spirit Halloween movie, uh, where? When? How? Why? 
Oh, I... I pressed A there. I'm gonna rewind. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Because I want to see how much money I get for this. 400 bucks. And I was sure I pressed that button. Like, sure as I missed that gas can right there, but... I'm streaming! I'm distracted! Have pity on me! Uh, here we go. Come on down, boys. Party, everyone's invited. Alright, there we go. Oh, fuck that! That's... Cheating. And we got too close with the beams. There we go. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. And I don't mean the cheat. I know I said this was going to be a not cheated playthrough, but come on. Come on, that's, that's bullshit. That's that's the sort of thing I would practice. I would, I would learn the ranges on that. Alright, two, three, and come on down, pal. Now, is this the most exciting gameplay in the world? No. Is this a hundred times better than the original version of this game? Yes, yes, absolutely it is. David Crane wishes he had come up with all these gameplay hooks in his original version. Come on. Sometimes a ghost can be dicks in this. Yeah, that's a run out of time situation. I'll let that happen. Because it's not like we need to go back to the uh, Ghostbusters HQ. We can just keep on keeping on. There, I caught a ghost. I, I went for the ghost instead of the gas. Rep a fiasco asking which version this is. This is the, the hated NES version. <coughs> which, believe it or not, I'm enjoying well enough. Oh, they're all so close to here. I could probably just release... I thought I was going to get more than one of those. Luckily, we have a chance to do it again. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's the way to play. I don't need to go for all of them in one fell swoop. Now we can enter the Zool building, if we so chose. If we so esteemly chose. We can go to the end of the game right now. But there's a few items I want. So I can just continue doing this and making money. And ain't that the Ghostbusters motto? Yeah, I don't know why I thought that one would work right at the top. At least there's no penalty to it. Come on, let's steer these guys over here. Now if I could go for three, play it safe. Alright, how much money do we have? But let's continue to work our way over to shop. Let's let's make a little bit more money as long as we're here, as long as we're passing by the, these people in distress. Caught another ghost. And now it's pretty far away from that. It's pretty generous. It's more generous than I remember as far as allowing you to uh, to capture the ghosts from halfway across the road. Oh, that one was so close. I so should have had that one. Let's make sure we get that one. Eh. We only got 200 bucks a pop because we popped them one at a time, but... Anyway, let's go to the shop. As promised. So I will need to slow down... Gas! Gas, gas, as the Eurobeat song goes. Alright. $17,000, that ain't bad. We can make a little more if we sell off some of the gear we no longer need. Don't need that. We don't need the trap anymore. In fact, we only need a couple items. I don't remember if you need a capture beam for the end of the game. A uh, pair of Salamanca says, When I saw the Jeremy Parrish video on this, I was shocked to find that this was originally a home computer game. Yep, we did play the, uh, the C64 version a little earlier. That's what we started with. I'm going to buy the anti-ghost suit. 
And I can buy some ghost food. Don't ask. I don't think we need the traps, right? We don't need the traps for the, uh... To go into the Zool building. Now we cannot go into the Zool building. We timed it out. I need a trap! Okay. And... Uno momento. We will skip the ghost food. I do not need the ghost food. Let's just buy a basic trap. Because that's all we need, I think. Alright, now let's go back to the Zool building. And yes, we will have to wait for a few more ghosts to enter before the game says something to the effect of enter the Zool building. Let's fast forward a little bit. Maybe not that much. Oh, there we go. And we don't even need to worry about gas right now. Oh, I inadvertently picked some up. Alright, so this is the end game. We're already here. Short stream. Don't worry, we got a few more versions of this game to play. Alright, now this is a beloathed section in video game history, because you have to tap the A button repeatedly to move your Ghost Busters. You can move them back and forth. They do work in like a sort of single file line sort of gimmick. There's also a thing here where you can enter these doors to hide from the ghosts that not many people seem to be aware of. I'm just going to use the turbo button. Assume that if you were playing this on the NES, you might also have a controller with the turbo button. That's one hit. We get three. Or maybe we get five because we have the, uh, the anti-ghost suits. We did not pick up the ghost food, which is a, a sort of bait you can lay in a corner of the screen that all the ghosts will gravitate towards and buy you some uh, precious seconds. Ah, these ones are not cooperating. So yeah, should, should you have to mash the A button a billion times to take your uh, steps forward? Should you need to use the turbo button? Should it just be holding down left and right? Like I'm effectively doing right now. I'm holding down the turbo button, but I'm using left and right on the D-pad to really handle the movement. If I stand still, I stand still. So yeah, this should work without mashing the A button. That is definitely a genuine critique. Oh, there's some conversation about the AVGN and uh, him not doing a good job faithfully representing the games he reviews. And yeah, no. He certainly doesn't. But I don't really begrudge him that because his content was primitive at a, po at a moment in time. I mean, he didn't have a, a guideline as to you know, what a video game review should really look like. Let alone an angry one. And, you know, he was trying to do these videos from the perspective of, like, some kid who didn't read the manual, right? Like, everything I'm saying here is not, like, super unique. You could get a lot of these insights from reading the manual. There's 24 floors of this. This is another bad point. This is another negative point in the sequence's uh, disfavor, if you will. But yeah, you know, I talk a lot about the AVGN because I talk a lot about games that the AVGN has covered. And you know, he makes my job a little harder. He makes it so that when I post on social media about any game that he happened to have covered, uh, I get insufferable people who are like, Have you seen the AVGN episode on this? This game sucks! And, you know, <laughs> I get it. I get the want to chime in with that to, to confirm that people have seen the content you have seen. But, you know, I like to think I do a little better than him. I, especially when I was writing, I like to think I, uh, you know, I put a little research in. I, I'm doing pretty comprehensive articles on these games. Oh, okay, so the ghost suit does not protect me. We're going to cheat a little bit here, because there is a thing I can do here to not die in this section. That is go inside a building, go inside a door that happens to have a ghost in it. That one does not have a ghost in it. So there's, there's a, a glitch with the uh, the way it tracks how much health you have. How many... Uh, and hold on. Egregious cheating now, I know, but... But this section is kind of bullshit. Again, I made it more bullshit by not getting the ghost food. Delay is trapped. Let's go down one floor. Maybe the floor before this. 
will have what I am looking for to make this easier on myself. Good. Alright, so now we have 255 hits. So we can get hit as many times as we want and nothing bad will happen to us. And I noticed uh, Frappe Fiasco, who mentions that their Dark Castle video gets nothing but comments from people referencing the Dark Castle AVGN review. And we have a Dark Castle article up on the site too, which I believe references that, that, uh, that video of yours. And yeah, it's a good video, and Dark Castle is a good game on the Mac, and it's a fine game on the Genesis too. Anyway, here we are. This is the ending. Or not the ending, per se. This is the, the final boss. Uh, flashing light warning. I forgot all about that. Uh, this is sort of a timer down here. The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is working their way up the building. We need to get hits on Gozer? The Destructor? So, there is a strategy to this. It is... To get your hits in, go off screen to dodge the bullets. That was a lovely sound. If you're lucky, you can get two hits in. Otherwise, you can just do... It's unfortunate that the bullets face backwards when you go backwards. They should just always be facing forward, because everything you want to hit on this screen is forward. Let's see how much I can do. Not getting as many hits in as I theoretically could, because I'm not good at uh, video games. And we'll know that we're running low on health, because we do have a, a set amount of health here. If our characters start flashing as obnoxiously as the screen is. And, you know, uh, to, to finish the AVGN tangent, he's gotten a lot better. He cares a lot more now than he used to, ever since he's like started actually talking to developers and getting their input on the games, and, and doing the history of the games. So I think new AVGN is definitely a lot better than old AVGN is, and I know that's an unpopular opinion in, in, in and of itself. Uh, believe it or not, I wasn't uh, attracted to the AVGN back in the day for, like, the skits, for him beating the shit out of Bugs Bunny or taking diarrhea dumps on him or whatever. Uh, I just like to see bad games, because I'm interested in bad games. I don't know if y'all know that about me. It's a little, it's a little hobby of mine. It was just good to hear about ones that I had not maybe heard of. But, uh, you know. He's just a guy making a living. You know, he's pursuing his, his real passion project now, which is his music. And, uh, boy howdy. If people want to complain about AVGN episodes, uh, save the complaints for Rex Viper music. Let's go back down here. Uh, that Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is, uh, is inching ever closer. And I do not know how many more hits we need to get here. Uh, but that is what it looks like when you die. That is a lovely effect. Bad luck. You could not save the city of New York. The prediction will come true. Gozer has overcome our civilization. The game is over. A little more than the game is over in that descriptor right there. Uh, but what would happen if we, we did not let the, the world end? Sorry for the flashing lights. We're gonna get another flashing light show when I do eventually beat this boss. Watch it just be one more hit. It was just one more hit? Are you fucking with me? <laughs> I could have avoided the embarrassment of rewinding. <sighs> okay, congratulation. You have completed a great game and proved the justice of our culture. Now go and rest our heroes. So, funny thing, you know, we, we shit on this screen here. Here come the credits. Would, would you know it, the Japanese version, the original release of this on Famicom, this screen is just completely broken. It's just a blank screen, and when these credits start to scroll, it's just two characters, two Japanese characters that show up, like, midway through. And that's it. So, you know, if you want to compare and contrast endings here... I think they point to, like, the wrong address in RAM or something like that, because the text is in the ROM for that game. For that Japanese release. Lovely little sound effect that ended on there. Anyway, that was the NES version of Ghostbusters. 
Uh, and, you know, can't really bring myself to get mad at that, is the truth of it. Uh, we, we played the, uh, the C64 version, the original version, that this is apparently a disservice to, and I think that version sucks. Whereas I think this is mostly competent. Expanded shop. Expanded road mechanics. Just a better game. Not bad. Two or three out of five. It can get repetitive. The music can get annoying. But uh, ultimately, not really mad at that. Pair of Salmonka says, American culture, American culture has no justice. They lie. Start to get political. No, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Taco says, don't forget how you get, uh, you get free money because one item resale value is more than buying price in the FC version. Yes, that is another thing. If we were to load the Japanese version, I could just quickly get myself infinite money by buying and selling and then rebuying and then reselling the same item over and over again. I think it might be the ghost alarm. So I think it's slow because it is the cheapest item in the game, but it's something you can do. So, you know, I could theoretically do that. I could do a quick run of the Japanese version if I really wanted to. But, uh... You know what? Let's do that. Let me go ahead and see if I have the Japanese version. Let, let me search... For the cartridge in my collection. Yeah, I'm just sifting through cartridges here. Don't mind me. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. Oh, it sure is dusty in here. Boy, howdy. <coughs> I ate a dust bunny. Him, <laughs> him. Ah, there it is. Let's go ahead. Can I just drag and drop this ROM on? I mean, cartridge into my system. Obviously. Here we are. Uh, will you go over the blast? Ever go over the Blast Entertainment story? Asked Parasol Maka. At some point, we got some games to play. Yeah, code for Nintendo Family Computer. Yeah, this is the Japanese version. I was waiting for the screen to compare it. How popular is Ghostbusters in Japan? Asked Sarah the Kroksune. I feel like it's one of those things that's just too connected to American culture to really be understandable to a Japanese audience. But then again, South Park was, like, really popular because of that. That's a good question. One for maybe a Ghostbusters scholar, which is not what I am. Hundred. Here we go. Now, let me confirm what item. Also, are there more cars on the road in this version? There's two cars at once in this version. Which I do not recall ever happening in the uh, the American version. So maybe they attempted to make this version a little more difficult. In a few different ways. Uh, fast money glitch. I'm checking game facts for this. The ghost alarm. Buy it for 2,000. Sell for 3,000. Plus it goes vacuum. I'm dumb. Of course it's not going to be the first thing on the menu. Shop works, by the way. So yeah, they, they tighten up the translation a little bit. I'm figuring out how efficiently I can mash this out. Yeah, we're we're really in the money right now, boy. Oh, this is. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. I could just probably use like, you know, game genie or equivalent thereof. Right now, I'm just rolling A B A B A B A B A B. So yeah, if you have the patience for this, this is certainly the quickest way to make money in this game. Short of buying an action replay or what have you. That's my button mash. That's my tap pattern. I'm actually sending Morse code. I'm saying, please send help. Please get me off the stream. <laughs> I think this is more than enough money to buy everything we need to buy in this game. But I want 200,000, because it's a nice round number that I'm going to immediately spend more money than that and, and make it an uneven number. 200,000! Okay, cool. 
me a super trap, give me the suit. Give me the sound generator. Give me a hyper beam. Fucking why not? Alright, now we can exit out of this. Let's capture some ghosts with the hyper beam. I didn't get to show off the hyper beam last time. To show how much longer it is than the uh, the standard beam. I guess this, this is notably a little bit harder with the two cars simultaneously that you have to deal with. And that's not as long as I remember it being, but... Uh, Video Game King was saying the game was telling me to go to the Zool building already. We just started this game, this playthrough, and we can already go to the Zool building straight away. Because of the money that we've made, I believe. I believe it is based on the economy. Yeah, they really want me to go there, huh? Alright, let's get the food. Let's let's go back to the shop. And see what the ghost food does for us. What is the sound generator? I don't remember what the sound generator is, truth be told. I like this game. Or, you know, the NES version well enough, but... But yeah, what we don't need is the, uh... What don't we need? I don't think we need the anti-ghost suit, honestly. Oh, we, we rolled the money over. It looks like we rolled the money over into, like, the, uh, the, the maximum value, so... Whoops. Just as well. Let's go to the Zool. And I can just speed all the way over there. Alright, now we have the ghost food, we have the sound generator. If someone can look up what the sound generator does, I'd be curious to know. Alright, let's see if I can do this legit. I mean, as legit as I can in a, in a file where I, I cheated to get the maximum amount of money. Alright, that's a ominous start that we've already been hit once. How do I leave the food? Well, that was a great run, Cass. You really knocked that one out of the park, boyo. But let's start this one over. Let's pretend that I, uh, went this with a clearer head. Okay. If you have the sound generator, the ghosts have moved much slower, and if you have the ghost food, it tracks the ghost, but as soon as the food is off the screen, the ghosts come right back for you. Thank you, Frappe Fiasco. That's what happens when you pause the game. It holds the note for, like, a second. Start puts the food down. You can see that it, the food kind of disappears after a while because of sprite limitations. Also, you don't want to put it right in the middle because it means that the ghosts on the left are going to come for us. What I really want to do is put it all in... Well, actually, I want to get up these stairs first is what I want to do. I want to be above some of these ghosts. I don't know if the slow movement's really helping me out here. In fact, it might make things worse. Of course there's a ghost in there. Okay, there we go. Window of opportunity. As, as good a window as we're gonna get. And that's the end of that particular ghost adventure. But I do want to get to... <sighs> Unfortunately, I want to see the broken ending in this. I want to see the broken credit screen. So we're gonna continue to rewind and... And do what has to be done to prove the justice of our culture, etc. Ghost food. Granted, this is a very temporary measure. This is probably not worth the money or the inventory slot. To get the ghost food. If you're, you're playing this for efficiency. If you're using safety strats. There, I just fast forwarded it because I was sick of... Waiting for the ghosts. You know what? Fuck it. Hit me again. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Cool. I was really hoping there was a ghost behind that door. Gotta be the next one. We just gotta make it to the next 
door here. There must be some way to steer the ghost, like you can steer the ghost in Pac-Man, right? But there's one thing that video games have taught me, it's that ghosts are eminently steerable. How, which one even hit me there? Oh, it's probably the one that's coming up from the bottom. I hate- I don't like it as- I, I hate it as much as y'all do when the stream just becomes- Cass rewinds the game a hundred times to get the outcome they want. But, uh, you know. Game ain't leaving me much choice here. Alright. No ghosts, come on! Ugh. We're gonna get there. Yeah, this game feels a lot harder than the American version. Surprising. I just think there's the, the, the AI seems meaner. You know, truth be told, I don't even know if this work this particular glitch works in the Japanese version. I guess I'm figuring that out. For any inquiring minds that might like to know. And... Ghost me, no. At least this one looks like a clear ascent. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell where the hit detection is meant to line up with these ghosts sometimes. They can hit you from what feels like a mile away. Which I guess is fair play for the fact that... You know, you can capture them with the ghost vacuum so efficiently. I did not cheat this much when I was playing the American version, but at least I'll have that. I have a, a clean take of this. Or clean enough. I mean, granted, st granted it still uses a glitch present in the game code to, uh, to, to overcome what is otherwise a miserable section of gameplay, but... All I need... Thank you! Okay. Now we're golden. This is that was what we were waiting for this whole time. Now it ain't no problem. So the secret there is get hit twice by the ghosts here, and then open a door revealing a ghost that hits you and rolls your health back to 255, which is the maximum 8-bit integer that can be tracked in computer code on 8-bit architecture. Or something along those lines. That's probably a horrible explanation of one of what is a fundamental programming principle that would have been uh, adhered to at this point in time. Why am I even trying to avoid the ghost? Let's just... What if I do this? And fast forward the whole thing. Oh, we should probably stop fast forwarding at a certain point, though. Someone pointed out that I met the, the uh, 4-bit max, apparently, when I said 255. Thank you, SSFSX17. There's a lot of Daggerfall chat going on, chat, and I, I don't disapprove. There, there are some Elder Scroll games I've considered playing. There's a couple of uh, particularly bad ones of those. You may have heard of Skyrim. Uh, no, not even. I can't, can't even joke too much about that. Oh, we are... Definitely, we took a bunch of hits, though. And I wonder if he has more health, if Gozer has more health in this version than they would... ...on the NES equivalent version. You know what? Redo. And I want to see something. Namely, let's just cheat, let's just get to the ending here. I wasn't intending to play an entire version of this game twice. I was not intending to, you know, finish the first playthrough and then be like, let's do it again, but in Japanese. Ghostbusters. USA and Japan. Start with money. Immune to ghosts on Ghoul Stairway. Super sprinting. None of these help me. Someone mentioned the N-Gage Elder Scrolls, how they'd love to get it up and running on their phone. 
Well, you can do it in EKA 2 L1. You you can totally play that uh, that Engage Elder Scrolls game at this point. Granted, not on your phone. Or you know, there is an Android version of EK2 L1. There there may be there may be hope for you yet. How do I even exist? Bless the emulators developing EKA 2 L1. They should really come up with a better name than that. But, uh, yeah, they, they've mostly solved all emulation of Engage games on PC, and I believe there is an Android version of that emulator, which means that, theoretically, you can play those Engage games on your Android device. I think you have less health in this version. Oh no, we gave away the ghost suit. That's why we're getting hit. And, uh, taking so much more damage in this version. This is my own stupidity, because I made bad investments with the infinite money we had. Alright, I think the strategy might just be to sidestep. No, never mind. I think the strategy I purported earlier is the correct strategy, where you just go on and off screen. Try to get two hits in. You won't always get them, because stuff might pop up. Yeah, safety strat. I think every time you go down, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man climbs up a little bit more. And no, I cannot explain why the icon for EKA 2L1 is a duck. Pair of Salamanca. I'm sure it's rooted in, like, some Nokia, like, develop dev environment, or, you know, debug build, or some sort of, like, program that existed. You know, the same way that we know, the preeminent GameCube and Wii emulator is called Dolphin, based off the code name for what, you know, this that system, you know, everyone knows the Dolphin, everyone knows that story. So it might be something like, you know, similar with regards to ducks in the history of the N-Gage. But also, I don't think it's, you know, EKA one is not necessarily an N-Gage emulator, it's an, an emulator for that specific operating system that N-Gage ran on, if you want to be, like, pedantic about it. I mean, of course, most people are using that for the purposes of playing N-Gage games. But there is more to it than that. How much more to it? How many, like, apps or, like, are killer apps on there? Like, you know, people really like the word processor on that OS, on Symbian OS. How many more hits? I know I can only take one, but I would love it. Uh, this this could be bad. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Nick of time. Okay, let's see this glorious ending screen. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't say. Cool. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Oh, you shouldn't have. That's really nice of you to say a game, but no, it, it was a team effort. I think you, I will play the game again. I will come back and uh, enjoy Ghostbusting all over again. Yeah, no, our, our culture really does have a lot of justice, if you think about it. I, I mean, that's really poignant, actually, if you, if you pay it some thought. Oh, yes, uh, that. Whatever those symbols are. Riri, I believe, if the messages in chat are to be believed here. But yeah, so that's why we would await uh, Japanese players at the end of this game. Love that note. Anyway, that was another playthrough of Ghostbusters. Don't know why I did that, but I, but I did it. And here we are. Let's move on to another version. Uh, before we jump into the Sega Master System version, let's take a look at the 2600 version. This one would have been handled in-house by Activision, I believe. So it should be a little closer to that original Commodore 8, Atari 800 version. Let's say we want to start this game. I'm going to press Game Start. Here is the shop. They do have descriptions for these items. These are the only items in the game, I believe. So the economy is kind of pointless. 
Let's buy two traps, why don't we? Let's buy the vacuum, the bait, and the imasi, no, image. Uh, people saying this is an unreleased version. Uh, let me double check that. I, I don't believe you're correct. Yeah, no, May 10th, 1985 release date. This this was released. It has a product ID, AZ108 and everything. So th this is a retail product. Alright, so I flipped through the difficulty switches on there. That was L and R on my controller, but left difficulty switch, right difficulty switch. That will get you out of the shop and into the game. Uh, Pearl Salmanca, uh, Pear Salmanca seems to be shocked that this game was actually released. Said no one was buying an Atari 2600 in 1985. You would be surprised. As a, as a budget option, this is one of them. I already fucked this up. Oh, never mind. I, uh, I managed it. And you forget that people were buying 2600 games that late. Uh, because it was still a cheapo console, comparatively. Compared to the likes of the NES. I mean, like, people were clamoring to get rid of these things. So there was a lot of overstock to get through. Messed that one up. Uh, Video Game King mentioned this is a technically ambitious Atari 2600 title. While I can think of other games with a similar degree of complexity, we were all late and required peripherals. Yeah. You know, they, they certainly took that Atari 800 code and, and brought it here. I'm gonna cheat my way through this. I want to see what the end game looks like. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. Now we need to go back to Ghostbusters HQ to drop off the ghost traps. And, you know, not to parrot the narrative about the, the video game crash in 1983, blah, 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 don't make me vomit. You know, let me tell you about Doki Doki Panic while I'm at it. But, you know, the, the, the myth of the video game industry collapsing it certainly wasn't a worldwide thing. And, you know, it certainly wasn't very long. It was the collapse of Atari and all the competitors to Atari. But it was so quickly supplanted by the NES that, ultimately, it is such a small blip. And the only reason why we continue to talk about that crash is because uh, a bunch of dudes who were around at Atari and Activision and the other manufacturers at the time keep propagating that story to make themselves sound like they were blameless in the events that transpired. When meanwhile, there was one very clear party at fault, and it was Atari, which was mismanaged into, like, oblivion and back. And then they sunk the entire industry in. Anyway, yeah. Uh... 2600s. They still existed. And people, there was still some demand for them. Because these video games were still somewhat impressive. Uh, Paris Dalmach is saying, I'll tell you what isn't myth. The 2600s sucked ass for the most part. And, I mean... Eh, what what lens are you looking at it through? What what year? What What goggles? What decade or century goggles are you looking at it through? There are a few fun 2600 games that I could still play to this day. Granted, not a lot. But, you know, there's some simple fun to be had, and there was a moment in time where this seemed very impressive. Uh, I am headful asking, did I miss something? Why is there green slime smeared on the car? So that's the ghost vacuum. That's how we're capturing the ghosts that are not showing up during that sequence. Alright, I would like to go to the Zool building now. We have earned more money than we started with. I think it's possible to go back to the shop. Uh, by some arcane combination of... difficulty switches, but ultimately I would just like to end this version of the game. Yeah, these road sections still suck, huh? These are still just completely useless. Just padding of the most egregious variety. And granted, the point of these isn't to, you know, like, avoid traffic. I mean, the design intention here is that you could slow down the crawl of the PK meter. So if you were having a tough time capturing the ghosts on the, the ghosts on this screen, you could at least be like, well, at least if I vacuum up ghosts during the driving sequence, I, I can slow down the, the tick-tock of the, the PK meter and buy myself more time to get better or do whatever. 
that was David Crane's intention with these sequences. I think the Nintendo version, I think the uh, the Bits Laboratory version, uh, realized that, that, is, that you could you do actual gameplay there. You could add actual challenge and stakes and, and things of that nature. Mechanics? And isn't it wild? Ain't that a crazy idea? Let's just... There we go. This is fine. This is this is slightly easier than the C64 version, too, and by that approximation, the, the Atari 800 version. Uh, Frappe Fiasco says, I'm still annoyed at Cass for calling Atari 2600 Boxing bad as a dope two-player game. Did I do that? Did I say that at some point? I don't remember the things I say. Uh, <laughs> where did I say that? Did I say it in an article? I probably said that in an article, or did I say it, like, on some other stream? I have no idea where I said that. I stand by it, by the way, that boxing is as basic as can be. I, I prefer karate, and that is one that more people seem to hate on 2600. But, you know, I'd also just rather play, like, combat if I'm doing two-player stuff. Oh, I sent notes to the Retro Pals when they covered the 2600, and you're like, Atari Boxing sucks, Frappe has bad taste. Ah, oh, that sounds about right. That sounds like something I said. I do remember that stream. I do remember sending them a care package of Atari 2600 games. I do remember this now, and I do remember including that in the bad games section. But I included good games in that. I also had a selection of good games for the 2600, and I stand by my good game picks for that. All right, let's fast forward a little bit here. Wait, no, do I need $10,000? That might be the cutoff point. Let's make $10,000 really fast. Making money. Still gotta dump off the traps. Oops. I fast forward a little bit too much and now I don't have any control and now the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is demolishing a building except he didn't really demolish it because this version of the game doesn't really have the capacity to track which buildings are destroyed and which ones aren't. Oh, but we did lose $4,000. Okay. That, that's going to make our lives a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. Fuck that. No, come on. There we go. Alright, dump them off. Quickly. Nope, I, I fast forwarded when I meant to rewind. Yeah, this is the most effective way, not even to bother with the, the beams into just, like, straight up... Oh, no. I don't want to collect another $4,000. When did I start fast-forwarding? Around here? Yeah, that was a mistake. I should have never fast-forwarded. That that was my, my fool's errand, because I think you need $10,000 to clear uh, the, the minimum benchmark for when you can go to the Zool building. So that was just stupid of me. I should have just been doing this. Fast forward through this, obviously, because I don't want to sit through another driving sequence ever again in a video game after this. Dump off the traps. We have $10,000 exactly. I think that entitles us to go to the Zool building. Let me look it up to be sure. Guides. Uh, ba ba da ba da You enjoy the music in the meantime, right? It's... Oh, Prayer Salamanca with some uh, unfortunate news. I found that Atari bought Atari Age, bogus, and by Atari I mean Atari SA, also known as Infograms SA. Just wait till you hear what they did with Moby Games, <laughs> and how they fucking ruined that site. How they made so you need to be a contributing member to the website to get access to the, uh... 
to editing functionality to like to contributions to, get to lists more than 25 entries long or whatever yet it is also the most broken system for moderation for approval so it's impossible to become a contributing member of that community unless you're already a member of that community therefore it is impossible to access lists more than 50 items long thanks atari you fucking jackals atari 2600 ghostbusters i would just like to get into the zool building Uh, to get to the building directly above the street you're on, blah, 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 blah. Zool. Periodically, you lose control of your Ghostbusters while the map... Uh, the roamers will start moving considerably faster towards the Zool. This means that the menacing, monstrous mushroom marshmallow man is quickly approaching. Your only way out is to drop bait if you brought any. Uh, the city's PK energy level reaches 9,999. You have at least $10,000. You have the opportunity to continue playing with your accumulated earnings. All right, so we need $10,000 and for this to happen. So luckily the ghosts have all stopped, which is awful convenient. That means that there is a slow crawl for this PK meter, but we're fast forwarding. We'll get there. All right, here we go. All I need to do is fast forward. Oops. All right, so how do you go underneath this guy? Where is the arc? Where is the sweet spot I can stand in? Oh, there we go. That's one. Two. All right. We get $2,000 for that. And uh, believe it or not, that's where the game ends. No staircase ascent. No inputs here. You're supposed to be able to, uh... If successfully you have conquered Zool for now, you'll see two Ghostbusters crossing the streams. You'll receive a $2,000 bonus. Uh, switch the game select or gamer set to go to the selection screen. You will start the new round with your accumulated earnings from the last round. Yeah, sure enough. So now I could, uh... You know, do another run with this very limited inventory, but I could have uh, way more traps if I wanted to. Anyway, that's what the 2600 version looks like, which is by proxy mostly what the Atari 800 version looks like and the C64 version. So I beat it. That counts as beating it. <sighs> How about we close on the Master System version? I could play... Ghostbusters on Genesis, which is a completely different game, one they actually have, like, fond memories of from childhood, but that's not what the stream is about. This is about playing different versions of the same game. Oh, we have karaoke, though. I'm waiting. Ghostbusters! If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Probably the Ghostbusters. If there's something weird, and it doesn't look good, who are you gonna call? Ghost guys. Ghost, ghost, busters, 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 busters. I'm afraid of ghosts. I'm afraid of ghosts. Please don't bring any ghosts to me. I am afraid. All right, cool. Let's start a new game. I'm really doing this again. Oh, it's just the initials. All right, that's... All right, cool. CC, welcome to the business world. <laughs> you are now the proud owner of a new franchise. The bank will advance you $10,000 for equipment. Use it wisely. Of course, we're buying the hearse. This is very similar to the C64 version. There's more items here, though, like the Super Ghost vacuums, a defensive wall, turbocharger. So, expanded. As, as these games are wont to be. Also, I just realized, can I make the screen slightly bigger? No, it's got like this letterboxing on the side. It's got this padding, but... Anyway, PK energy detector. I don't think I need the marshmallow sensor. I need the image intensifier so I can actually see the ghosts. I need the ghost vacuum so I can catch those damn ghosts. We do... High capacity ghost traps, ghost paralysis system. Is there a? Eh, 
Give me this. And, you know, I don't know what half these uh, parts are. Honestly, but, you know, if they're additions, they can't be too important. Is the excuse I'm going to tell myself. There's even people walking down the streets. That's cute. And it has this from the NES game. This is a 1987 release, I should mention, by the way. So this came out before Ghostbusters on NES had made its way to America. But a year after the Famicom version had released in Japan. Yeah, this is fine. It's improved in terms of presentation. I don't know if this music is better, honestly. Let's go back to Ghost HQ. There's no gas here, so it, I, I need to look up who developed this version of this game. I would not be shocked to hear it's the same developers as the uh, Masters. No, it's, it's this is developed by Compile and published directly by Sega. So that's good to know. And of course, everyone will comment on the banana ghosts. But hold on, are we losing money for running over people? That's an interesting touch. Uh, completely pointless. All right, so note to self, avoid running over people. Yeah, so these road sections you can crash, but it doesn't look like there's any gas considerations. Maybe you just lose money for crashing. Why is there no one here? The building... Okay, now there's something there. Okay. There we go. Successful trapping. We gotta go back to Ghost HQ. Someone's speculating that Compile did the Genesis Ghostbusters as well, which is a completely different game, mind you, than this, which is why we're not playing it, unfortunately. It's also a much better game, despite being a side-scrolling platformer. But, you know, it's, it's very action-oriented. They do Ernie Hudson dirty again, but, uh... By not including him among the playable characters, but... Oh, we have five ghosts on this screen. Two. The strategy here just seems to be... Coax them as close to it as you can. And then, uh, repeatedly... Deploy the trap. Can we go to another stop? Can we... Capture more ghosts. Because I ain't afraid of them. Let's make that, let's make one thing perfectly clear here. I am not afraid of no ghosts. I have no empty traps. This is going to be an ultra circuitous route to do, to basically just drop off the traps that we have. Luckily, I don't need to look out for gas to pick up. Just ghosts I could potentially pick up. Such as that. Do I get money for that, or do I, do I just slow down the PK crawl, the, the PK increase? All right, two stops. We'll start with the furthest one first. Because we're going to fill up our traps on the, you know, return trip. What? There was there was ghosts there though. Were we too late? Also, I can't help but notice the city's PK energy is is going up, so we're reducing every time we go to capture ghosts. Alright, makes sense. It's in line with the other versions, it's just not completely clearly communicated. Uh Parasol Manka, on the subject of Ernie Hudson, Ernie Hudson got his revenge when uh, Ghostbusters Pinball 
machine came out. He was the main voice actor who shouted out the jackpots and stuff. Unfortunately, John Trudeau designed it. I don't know enough about pinball to be like, oh, John Trudeau, that that rat bastard, that villain. Oh, you can move the guys up and down here? To what end? You know what? Fuck this. Let's rewind. I think I could have done this better. All right. I don't know what dimension the up and down, the vertical movement adds to this. But you know what? I got them all, so clearly it did something. Uh, someone's saying you can look up what uh, Justin Trudeau... Uh, where John Trudeau did in your spare own time. I don't want to issue content warnings. That is fair. Guess we're going back to Ghost HQ for now. We had eight thousand dollars. I want to see. Do am I getting any money for capturing these ghosts? Eight thousand. Eight thousand. That's the number to remember. Eight thousand four hundred. So we got two hundred bucks for each of the ghosts we picked up. That's not bad. I mean, it's something. It's better than nothing. I can't say if I've, I've ever played this version before. This is my first time playing this. This version of the game. Usually, if I want a Ghostbusters fix, I'm going to that NES version. But also, I never really had a Ghostbusters fix. I, I don't care about this franchise. Unless they put women in it, then I'm in intensely emotionally invested, and it's the most important franchise in the history of cinema. And I care deeply about. <laughs> Dust off that old drama, huh? Why don't, why don't I uh, bring that back? Is it, is it safe to say, are we allowed to talk about how much that movie sucked? Uh, <laughs> Paris Amok, I like Ghostbusters 2016, sue me. You know, I like improv comedy as much as the next person, but uh, their, their movies probably should not be improvised. Movies should probably be scripted, for the most part. You know what uh, other movies sucked? American Hustle, and that movie was like 90% improv, and it didn't fucking work. But, you know, I'm also, like, a comedy snob. And, like, I, I care deeply about, like, writing and comedy writers and stuff. Hey, we got four in one. You know, not to poo-poo you if you like the Ghostbusters reboot. I'm not here to be, like, that pedantic. It's obviously not... I obviously don't dislike it because, ooh, women. That's obviously not my stupid predilection. It is because I don't think the writing in it if what writing there is, is particularly good. And, you know, at the same time, by the way, I'm not in love with the original Ghostbusters. I don't give a fuck about original Ghostbusters. It's it's funny. It's fine. It's, it's not, like, an important movie as it's made out to be. And that Ghostbusters reboot, like the one after the, the female one, that one was way worse. That one is, is so, like, uselessly sentimental in a way that, like... Harold Ramis, I don't think, would have approved of if, you know, for all the pedantic nerds who are like, this is not what Harold Ramis would have wanted. And it's like, yeah, he wouldn't have wanted this shit either. He wouldn't have wanted people getting teary-eyed over, like, movie props in the like. In the way that Man Babies absolutely did. Anyway, now that I've alienated everyone on both sides of the aisle, right? Now that I've alienated both culture wars, at the, or both sides of the culture war, now we can get back to the game. Man, Stay Puff Guy is uh, fucking this place up. And we are losing money fast. I think we may have fucked up the game. I can't go to the Zool building. I need the money to go back to the Zool building. I need $10,000, which we were like on our way to earning. But I, what I forgot to do was go to the shop to buy the, the thing that would have slowed down the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But, uh, clearly there is... Huh? Is that game over? No, okay, it just rolls you back. <laughs> okay. 
I guess we had to see what would happen eventually. If I crashed. We, we lost money for it. And of course, it's the second we leave that screen. More damage done, more money lost. We are now completely broke. The situation is hopeless. We will not be proceeding to the staircase sequence. Sorry, but your mission has failed. The Keymaster and the Gatekeeper entered the Zool and calls, caused Gorza, the enemy boss, to awaken and destroy the city. You could not even set foot inside the Zool building because you were unable to earn enough money to gain admittance. Huh? Thus, the city was completely demolished by Gorza. The game is over. Try again from the start. Chaughty little tune. And you know... Call me crazy, I don't care enough to replay this version of the game to... It feels like it overcomplicates it with the amount of items you can buy from the shop. And, and the way that it necessitates you eventually, like, keeping such an eye on, like, the PK meter and your cash reserve so you can get the thing that slows down the state of Marshmallow and causes them to not destroy the buildings. It seems like the, the balancing act is way more delicate here. But, you know, presentation is a little bit better. I think it strips some of the mechanics out while incorporating new ones. The multitude of ghosts, different types of ghosts appearing in the, the capture screens, definitely an improvement. But uh, ultimately, I don't know. None of these versions of this game are particularly great. I'm sure that you could master this one and be like comparable to, if not maybe slightly better than the NES version. But I think I proved the point I wanted to prove by streaming tonight on Ghostbusters NES's birthday. Uh, which is to say that the NES version of Ghostbusters is superior to the original version on the home computer spectrum. I, I just think that there's more to do in it. It's a quite simple gameplay loop. Uh, I think it's satisfying enough. And uh, I think the C64 version is, is dull as dirt. Ghostbusters busting ghosts. We're busting those ghosts. We're the B-52s and we're... Doing the Ghostbusters theme. This is my... These are the, the range of impressions you can expect. My mastery of voice. My mastery of song, of improvisation. This is what people come to the streams for. <sighs> Short stream, says Paris Long. We did an hour and a half. That's, that's not nothing. And, you know, for something I threw together. You know, it's not that bad, right? We're streaming tomorrow, too. Uh, we're doing, uh, parody games. I know I advertised this, uh, yesterday as well, when we streamed yesterday. Three streams in a row! Three stream days in a row! That's wild. That's more than we streamed in an entire year one year. <laughs> but, you know, we're trying. We're trying to grow this little thing. This little stream, this little show. And, uh, we're doing pretty well at it so far. People already know that, that, already recognize that it's Parody Interactive. It's not just Parody Interactive, but yes, we are doing Parody Interactive. We're doing parody games as a general concept, but also a focus on Parody Interactive. But also, a few others that don't get covered as often. But you'll have to tune in tomorrow to see that. Tune in Saturday, 8 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. You know the deal. Thanks everyone who tuned in on such short notice. Thank you for dealing with these solo streams. Uh, I don't like doing them as much as I like having people along, if I'm being truthfully honest here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and raid Real Slavic Bear, I think. I think the, the raid channel thing is showing me people who are not actually streaming at this current moment in time. Let me refresh that. Him, him. Still live. Raid channel. Okay, they are not streaming anymore. So instead, I will, I will uh, raid a YouTuber I like by the name of uh, Sandwiches, who does achievement runs in games. Looks like they're playing Dead Space 3 right now. So I wish them luck in doing whatever goofy-ass achievement is in that game. Uh, tune in tomorrow, and uh, as always, this has been Cass. Bye!